Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be chit-chatting my way through the Good and the Beautiful's history curriculum. I am just going to show you how I wrapped my mind around it and what things I really have been enjoying about it. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of talk my way through it. Now, I will, I will warn you, okay, um, history is the subject that I am the least confident in teaching um, in my home school. And that's just because history was just not my thing in school myself. I did well in it because I got good grades, but we all know that that has nothing to do with the information that you actually obtain. Um, getting a good grade is just that, getting a good grade. So um, I never just, I just never really gathered a good appreciation for history so when I stumbled upon the good and the beautiful's history program I found it through my friend um, Jane from the salty tribe she did uh, great review videos on them and if you haven't seen them you should check them out um, when I stumbled upon them I'm like hmm okay <laughs> everything that I had seen thus far just made me feel so like a deer in headlights um, and the good and the beautiful has kind of changed that around for me and made me feel really confident in approaching history and finding a way that it was going to work for us so I just kind of want to talk about that and what is included in the two um, curriculums I have I have year one and year two of history and I'm going to explain why I got both of them as well. First of all, if you are a history buff, okay, this may not be the curriculum review for you, okay, <laughs> because I don't have a lot of knowledge in the area of history. So my approach here has been very cautious and I really just had to give myself time to figure it out. So when I, I needed something that was not going to frighten me from the get-go and a lot of the history curriculums that I had looked into, I'm just going to say it, when I would open the pages there was just a lot of words and I just felt very confused overall at how to figure this whole thing out. So what we did for history up until this point was just study historical figures. So um, I don't know if you've seen my last year's curriculum video on how we do history, but we basically just started off with a lot of the Who Was books um, and just a lot of uh, books on specific historical figures like Helen Keller, um, George Washington Carver, Neil Armstrong. We just started there with history because we figured if we just dive in to that one historical figure, we can just get like a nice little overview of some of the events and things like that. As we've done that, my little creative ideas have just kind of started to slowly pop up. Um, and one of the things that I did was start to put a timeline on our sliding glass window in our classroom. So I just use a chalk marker on the glass window um, and I just drew out a timeline and put in my little time slots and as um, certain events came up in our studies then we added them to the timeline and that was really working out. That was how we were approaching history then and it's still how we kind of handle it now but the reason why I got both years for history is that I need to figure out how I'm going to approach history. I have to gather some type of you know bearings when it comes to history uh, some type of understanding um, and when when I have a little bit then I can take it from there and that is why I really have been enjoying the good and the beautiful thus far so I think I've already gotten quite chatty but I'm trying you guys <laughs> I am trying okay so I'm just gonna go through it and kind of give you some of my thoughts some of the things that I went through in the beginning to kind of wrap my mind around how I'm gonna use it um, just like any of the other curriculum, I do not use it from cover to cover. I do not plan on using all of it. Um, I am very excited about year three that's coming out that is adding um, more historical events. And when that comes out, I'm going to get that too. <laughs> because 
like I said, like I use any other parts of the curriculum, I'm using it as a heavy resource. Of course, all of this information you can get by checking it out on their website. Um, you can check out other people's reviews and they'll show you basically what's inside. Um, the gist of it is that history, they built his, the history program uh, to be done family style, which is super nice because anything done family style is the right way in my book because it's just so much easier when you're trying to manage um, three different grade levels, three different ages in homeschool. So in the history one, you will receive the course book, Big Book of History Stories, The Keys of History Game. When you open up the course book, again, the way they structure their curriculum is really helpful for me. Um, I am able to easily go to a specific section and I don't know, I don't know if it's because I have that creative brain. Um, the way that it's laid out just really lends itself to to easy study for me. Um, I, I don't know because other other curriculums I open up the books and there's just way too many words like the basic structure of how they lay out the words and the lessons um, but <laughs> the good and the beautiful the way that they use what they underline what they make bold using check boxes beside um, certain items of instruction that's really helpful for me I know that sounds trivial but it's really helpful for me Anyway, so they lay out in the table of contents. Um, unit one is ancient history. Let me be clear here. We have only made our way through the majority of unit one um, covering ancient history. So we've done lesson one, the creation, lesson two, Adam through Enoch, lesson three, um, Noah through the Tower of Babel. These are the ones that we have made our way through. Um, everything else is not on my radar right now. I have basically been going through the curriculum, like I said, to wrap my mind around it and figure out how I am going to approach teaching it um, to the kids in the future. Um, and I have a lot of really awesome ideas which I'm super excited about. So the intention of this review is just to kind of talk my way through um, my thoughts as I go through it and how I plan on approaching it with my kids. Now, I think that my slow approach is fine because they're so young and this is really not a necessity for me to have covered completely right now. So again, I feel no need to rush whatsoever. And like I said before, we unpack everything in homeschool. So for something to take super long, whereas other people may be breezing through it, is not abnormal for us. Um, I really do want to create that sense of exploration and that genuine love of learning new things. So if it takes me a while to gather my bearings on a certain subject, then I'm okay with that, you know? So if you're trying to get through it um, in a year, then, you know, this might not be the review for you and there's plenty of other ones like Jane from the Salty Tribe that will really you know um, give you a better look on working through it because she has older children so um, I could definitely see taking a different approach if my children were a bit older um, but for right now this is the pace that I really like rambly again so we made our way through unit one in ancient history um, but they separated ancient history. Unit two is the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. Um, what I basically did was went through and used my highlighter washi tape and I highlighted the different sections that I wanted to be able to focus on. We definitely wanted to start with ancient history. It was the thing they had the most attachment to because they started by learning all of the Bible stories so they were most familiar um, with the content that was inside of unit one for ancient history. Um, the next is the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. I don't see any need for getting into any of that right at this current moment, um, but there were two lessons that were of interest to me, and that was Lesson 24, The Age of Chivalry, and Lesson 29, The Scientific Resolu Revol Resolution. <laughs> And, uh, and Lesson 29, The Scientific Revolution. So I'll talk about that a little bit more when I get a little further into it. For Unit 4, which is the Victorian era, let me see, 
For Unit 4, which is the Victorian era, the history of flight, and the Cold War era, we are not going to cover um, any of the other lessons except for Lesson 55, which is the history of flight, and Lesson 58, which is the space race. So those were the two that I selected there. Now, mind you, I'm still going through the other lessons and wrapping my mind around them and taking notes on different things we could do um, when we finally do cover it. But for right now, I don't, you know, I don't plan to get into any of that. So the, the highlighted areas are the areas that I hope to include as a part of our history curriculum for this coming year. So the way that I approach going through the curriculum what I like so much is how easy it is to review the lessons. So I generally just take a little bit of time after the kids are in bed and review the lesson to get a general overview of what is being taught and the activities that might be introduced and the concepts and all that other stuff. Um, when I get a general understanding of what is going on, then like all of my creative juices just kind of start flowing and I think about ways to really engage and make it more fun. Um, as I have those thoughts, I write them down and take notes, you know, and that is how I begin to approach um, addressing the lesson. Anyway, but in the beginning of the um, course book, again, they lay out what they are all about, God and character, um, that it is to be done family style. Um, they give you suggestions on teaching the children from grades K through 12 with 60 minute lessons two to three times a week. We do not do that. Um, we do it whenever it fits in. In general, I have, we cover a history lesson once a week but that doesn't necessarily mean we're covering this history lesson we just do history in general once a week so if we are working on Helen Keller reading through um, one of our Helen Keller books or if we're working on Neil Armstrong book or whomever we are studying that is a historical figure we could do that um, one week for history and then some weeks for history we do a lesson inside of here so we don't do we don't do one lesson every week, basically. Um, but we do cover history once a week. I hope that makes sense. And again, what I love about The Good and the Beautiful that has not changed is that because there is no preparation time, I mean, I am taking a lot of time to prepare for how I'm going to teach in the future, but you don't have to. You could totally pick it up and just follow their instructions and complete the lessons. You know, so if I'm not able to teach something, it's really easy for someone else to take over for me. Again, that's a super pro. And then, of course, you know, my favorite thing about their curriculum is that it is available in PDF format. So again, um, if we are out of town, away, I don't have to have my course book with me to complete lessons or to cover information, you know, and that's just invaluable. So, oh, another thing that goes along with the curriculum is the Student Explorer and they have it split up um, by the grade level. So it will tell you there are downloads that you need to print. There are four Student Explorer PDFs that are included with the course set. You have grades one through three, which is what I have downloaded for the kids um, and printed out. And then there's grades four through six and grades seven through nine and then grades 10 through 12. So there's a different student explorer that goes along with whatever grade level your child is in. And then the last part is the audio recordings, which we love, and I'll just talk about that in a little bit. So you get a password that comes in your course book um, that will have you log in. Then you have access to all of the audio recordings that go along with your lessons, which you'll get prompts. Um, to go in and listen during whatever lesson you're on. Um, inside it says the length of the lessons. Each lesson is designed to take around 60 minutes. This includes 20 minutes for reading, um, for a read aloud book of your choice. Yeah, so they have suggestions of read alouds that can go along with your course, and we just don't do that just yet. So yeah, in the beginning of the course book, there's all this good bits of information to help give you a good start. They have memorization at the front we've done quite a bit of these uh, we don't do them all because we are just not there yet we don't need it just yet so we did choose some of the smaller um, things to memorize 
Um, next, they'll have the read aloud suggestions. The unit one suggested books are here. The unit two suggested books are there. I mean, it gives you all of the instructions that you need. Unit three suggested books, unit four suggested books. What I love is just that they are suggested. So you don't have to read them, but they're just suggested. So let's just talk about a lesson for a second. In lesson one, they start with the creation. Um, they have a section that you're going to read to the child. You're going to spend about 15 minutes selecting two memorization pieces for each child. We don't do that either. We just use the memorization when it fits in well. Again, like I mentioned before, when there's too many things for me to follow, sometimes I get flustered. And so to remove that flusteredness or frustrations, I just don't, I don't, um, hold myself to having to complete each one of these things but it's great that it's there to remind you that this is something that you can add to it as well um, then you read to the children again and then you'll have them complete lesson one assignments in their student explorers while you read Genesis 1 and 2 so I'm reading to them and they're going to complete their student explorer activity at the same time that was basically the end of the first lesson for the creation lesson. And let me show you um, what was inside of their student explorer. One second. Their history student explorer for year one. So just like they said, as I read to them, then they completed the activity that was inside of their explorer. They just had this little chart here for creation. They copied Genesis 1 and 1, and then they went in and drew for each day of creation and then another piece of copy work down at the bottom here. Yeah, so that is what he did. The next lesson was super short and simple. Um, we just talked about Adam through Enoch. I think this was also when they were introduced to the audio recording for lesson two. Yeah, and they really, really enjoyed those reenactments with the sound effects in the background and all of that other stuff. They really got into the characters. They really enjoyed that. And then we moved on to lesson three, Noah through the Tower of Babel. Same deal. They basically tell you everything that you are going to do um, and everything that you need. You start off with the Bible is, are the extra items that you need here. And then you start by playing the Keys of History game. Another part of that was completing a section of their um, Student Explorer. So this went along with lesson three. Can you see it? Lesson three. So that's their Student Explorer. Um, so like I said, we made our way through several of those lessons inside of Unit 1, but now I'm just going to kind of show you how I worked my way through the rest of the curriculum to identify what I wanted to work on for this next coming year. Um, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see <laughs> the little tabs that I put um, in the selected lessons that I wanted to be able to cover. So basically just those highlighted sections in the beginning. Um, I then went to the actual pages inside of the curriculum. So the very first one I have here was lesson 24 and this was the age of chivalry. We have done the armor of God for our Bible lessons in the past and one thing I really wanted to do was actually purchase a suit of armor for them to wear and just kind of do reenactments and things. I thought that would be so much fun to add to the mix. So I just went ahead and highlighted the Age of Chivalry because hopefully we get around to doing that. I will definitely be purchasing the suit of armor for my kids to, you know, play out in the yard with, okay? I am that person. <laughs> Completely extra. So then you're going to go through and read to the child um, whatever she has laid out here. Now, I love, you guys know that I love the scripts. That doesn't mean I necessarily agree with everything that's in the script, and that doesn't mean that I don't um, go through and uh, make any adjustments that I want to make or any additions or things that I want to point out. So the really nice thing about it is that these lessons are so short and sweet that like I said the night before I can quickly go through it and just whatever is on my heart to change or adjust or leave out or add to um, that's when I do that. So I will just put a little post-it note in here about what I don't want to read or what I do want to add to what I'm reading. Just, you know, any changes or adjustments I want to make based on what I know about my kids and what I want us to be learning in my home. Um, the next thing after you read that is read the story of Life of a Night that's inside of the book of history stories. Um, 
then you read to them again then you're gonna play the audio recording and they'll tell you which one to do then you read to them again I absolutely love um, all of the illustrations I love that the activities are nice and simple for the most part um, which makes it you know you, know, you just don't have to add a lot of fuss to the mix. You can just go in and get the lesson completed and you pretty much have most of what you need um, to do that. And I really like that. Then I moved on to lesson 28, the Black Death and the Renaissance. The reason why I selected this lesson because was because of the story in the Big Book of History for things that Leonardo loved. And that led me back to this lesson um, to kind of go through it and see what I wanted to cover. Now, like I said before, there when you skip around, there are things that you miss because you have skipped around in lessons. But um, I've had no problem adapting it or, or providing a brief summary um, of sorts to catch them up a bit so that we can still do different parts of the lesson. I have no problem with that. And like I said, I probably will end up going back through the actual curriculum at a different time and then we can go into it um, more in depth. And that's basically how I use pretty much every part of the curriculum. I like to have a little bit of a nicer introduction and then I can revisit it later on and go more in depth. And actually that's kind of the rhythm that they have when they're explaining how to approach um, a lot of the lessons inside of the curriculum. Um, not specifically as far as skipping lessons because they do suggest that you not skip lessons but um, as far as going back with the different grade levels it just basically each time you revisit that lesson with a higher grade you're going deeper and you're digging deeper into that information so I've had no problem with it. Um, the next one that I bookmarked was lesson 29 the scientific revolution this is very much so because my oldest is extremely interested in this we've talked briefly about the scientific revolution before in the past so I thought it would be nice to go ahead and do this lesson with him as well um, I see inside of this lesson you're going to read whatever information to the children whatever you've adapted or if you leave it the way that it is um, I like that they have pictures, they're nice simple pictures which really helps me to create a connection when I'm studying and I know it helps my kids when they're studying as well. So I've started going in and looking up different pictures to be able to add to the mix. Pictures that they can then cut out and add to their um, history notebooks. I thought that would be a lot of fun and just have them kind of write on the side the things that they remember or found interesting about whatever we're covering. So those were some of the ideas I had for that and basically a lot of what we do in um, other subjects in our homeschool. Then read Isaac Newton in the big book of history stories. Then you have discussion questions, play the keys of history game, unit two read aloud, finish it up. Now, all of this stuff is stuff that you can just kind of choose to do or choose to not do. <laughs> I mean, it's totally up to you. Um, the next thing I bookmarked that I wanted to cover was Lesson 51, and that is the Foreign Missionary Movement. I was particularly interested in that because of the story on Dr. Livingstone. Lesson 55, the history of flight. They will show you in the beginning what um, you need to be prepared to complete everything that's in the lesson. So this is just stuff that I would have gone ahead and um, pulled together and put into a box so that when I came upon the lesson I had everything I needed to go ahead and complete whatever activity that they prompt you to complete. Um, there's a video on animated history of aviation on YouTube that they suggest that you watch. Um, then there is the Wright Brothers Take Flight in the big book of stories that you're going to read. And then they have the activity laid out here. It's basically just the same rhythm throughout and I just went through and tagged all of the lessons that I actually wanted to cover for this coming year. So the same thing that I did inside of the actual course book, I did inside of the big book of history stories. It is really a beautiful book of stories. I really love it. Um, it's really appealing to me. I love the size of it. I love the illustrations inside and I really like the stories in general. You can see it. I just went through and bookmarked those same stories that go along with the lessons that I wanted to cover for this coming year. For instance, like the life of a knight. 
So I have that bookmark so it's easy for me to get right to it. Um, it was really simple for me to read through the story myself and gather my variants in that area and just really think about how I'm going to teach the lesson once I get to it. I spend quite a lot of time thinking about my kids and how they learn and how I imagine us approaching certain lessons. I'm a bit extra, but I like doing that. It's fun for me. <laughs> the next one I bookmarked was things Leonardo love. I mean, the artwork is gorgeous, you guys. Isaac Newton. Aja and the Berlin Wall is one that I bookmarked. I think one thing that I thought about while I was going through it and what I was going to say in this review is that history is a strange one. Um, it's a strange one for me because, and it always has been, even when I studied it on my own in school, I remember thinking to myself like, how do these people know what is true? You know, and you know you have historians who make it their life's mission to study, but um, just really, you really are in a space where you have to rely on the studies of others. And that is where I always had a disconnect with history. Um, if I'm not touching it myself, um, how do you know how much has gotten lost in translation? And I feel like there's a lot of truth to that and validity to, you know, my concern. So when approaching history, I definitely wanted to take an explorer's um, position or approach with my kids. Um, I wanted them to know that there were things that, you know, they, they start with questions when you start reading about the Bible. Well, how do people know that? Or if it was so long ago, like, you know, how, who told this story? And I, I totally, I feel them, you know, because <laughs> I'm like exactly who, you know, recorded the story and how much did they leave out and um, how much did they change or add to. And that, that was always the challenge for me. So I really wanted us to approach history um, um, with an explorer's heart, if that makes any kind of sense, okay? <laughs> Um, one thing I also was aware of is that when diving into a curriculum, in particular a history curriculum, I just knew that I had to be careful of any offense that was going to happen. I knew that, you know, I'm going into this um, with an explorer's heart trying to uncover truth. And I knew that it wasn't going to be easy. And I don't mean for that to be feel heavy, but I guess that's kind of how I feel towards history. Um, when you have so many misrepresentations or things that may have been sugar-coated or, um, or left out, you know, completely, you just kind of wonder, like, where is the truth, you know? Um, and I want to adapt that same seeker of truth mentality. I want my kids to have as well. Um, I really like the way that The Good and the Beautiful is laid out because it's really easy for me to kind of take a basic structure and really run with it. And that's what I like a lot, you know. Um, there's not too many words. The stories are nice and simple. The lessons are pretty much short and sweet. And it lets me just kind of like inhale what is there, right? And then just write down all my questions. Well, how did you know that? Or um, how could this be true? And I guess that's kind of the approach that I've been taking when I am going through the history lessons. Um, I also wanted both of the years um, because I wanted to be able to cover everything that they had thus far and really just kind of feel it as a whole. Um, one thing that I did notice about these stories is that oftentimes, which kind of makes sense because they are the good and the beautiful curriculum, you know, so everything you read is kind of like super good and super beautiful, you know, but life is not like that. Uh, so that that was one thing that if, if you read too many of the stories or, um, or too many of the scripts back to back, just there's just a lot of good and a lot of beautiful, you know, but we are flawed and history is ugly, you know, and there was need for lots of grace. So I think when I approach history, I just, I'm, I'm just asking the Lord to help me to find truth, 
um, and to help me learn the lessons because I do think that in the ugly there are lessons and in the struggles there are lessons um, and so we are a fan of being lifelong learners just learning those lessons and being the best that we can be um, I know that was a tangent but anyway that was just something that I felt when I was um, moving through a lot of the um, stories inside of the history curriculum because sometimes I'd just be reading and she seems to highlight all of the good parts of a person um, but it totally leaves out a lot of the negativity you know a lot of the bad parts of the person and I don't I don't I don't look for you know someone to include that necessarily but um, when I'm reading through it, those are the questions that I ask. Well, is this true? Or how could he have been such pure hearted? Or just things like that, you know? And sometimes when you write them in stories for children in particular, you make them soft. You make them soft as not to scare the children. But I've been trying to find ways to really introduce the kids to um, that type of subject matter that is very prevalent in our world. Um, without making them afraid, but definitely making them aware that, you know, this world is not good and beautiful and you want to add that to the world. You know, you want to be the light, you want to be that good and the beautiful, but you need to know that that other side is there and you need to know what to do with it. I know, tangent, tangent, you guys, like, so off. <laughs> it's so off right now. And the reason I went off on that tangent is because sometimes you can feel some type of way when you're reading through the stories. Like inside of um, the blessings of a constitutional democratic republic. In a constitutional democratic republic, citizens are blessed to be free from dictators or leaders who rule unfairly and brutally. Instead, they enjoy peace, safety, opportunity and the ability to choose for themselves so it's kind of like you know the story lays out this perfect intent um, or the ideal United States of America and this just we know that that's not what is in our true world so while the intentions are good sometimes it can just feel a little bit too pure and too beautiful you know but again that is where in the beginnings of a lot of the curriculum they instruct you on how you should go through the program and then add your specific doctrines or beliefs um, along in the mix and so I can see where that would need to happen in a, in, in a lot of cases <laughs> and I'll say that lightly because I mean I kind of expected this when looking for history curriculum but again what I really enjoy is the structure and how basic it is how easy it is for me to just kind of grab onto a lesson and then I take it from there um, after I go through a lesson, I, I, you know, lay out all my questions, um, the tough ones, um, the easy ones, whatever, and then I take it to go and research. I hit my library hard, okay, and I try to find whatever books I can find on the matter to look for truth, you know, in there and to expand upon what has already been laid out. So I'm not looking for this to tell me, you know, what is you know again the end-all be-all of specific topic in history I'm not looking for that I'm just looking for a beginning you know just a beginning and the good and the beautiful does that for me so very well I do love that they include these beautiful illustrated maps throughout the curriculum for me that really helped me connect the dots you know you receive this chunk of information about this explorer or these places that um, people traded to um, or what they traded and to have actual maps that you can then reference um, is really nice so that was really helpful in me wrapping my mind around it and I know it's really helpful in the kids wrapping their minds around it as well 
Now, while I did say that a lot of the things are so good and beautiful, um, they still include truths in here. Uh, when they talk about Dr. Livingstone, um, they talk about his work in Africa and what his heart's mission was, which was to spread the message of Jesus and to try and end the practice of capturing and selling slaves. So they do touch on some of those things, but like I said, I'm not a I'm not going to see this from a historian's viewpoint. I am seeing this from a person who is so very interested in learning more about history and really uncovering truth in, in my own studies with my kids in our homeschool. So uh, the next part that I wanted to go over was the Keys of History game. So I like that this game is nice and simple has little pieces that goes along with it, keys of history boards, which on it have the same topics that are included inside of the course. The Middle Ages, the Berlin Airlift, um, Isaac Newton, Abraham and Jacob, and then included are these cards, which are beautiful. They're gorgeously made. Um, the first one being the game instructions. They completely lay out how you're supposed to play the game. Now, all of this doesn't, I mean, I don't, I didn't really get into this too heavy. I, I just opened them up and we just kind of started using them the way that we saw fit. It's pretty simple to um, grab a hold of, but basically uh, you land on a certain space, you pick a certain card, and you're asking the questions that are on the back of the card. There are three questions. Um, they're basically statements, not really questions, but they're statements that you read off and then there's a highlighted red part that is the answer. And in place of that red, answer you're going to leave it blank when you ask that question or make that statement so for Isaac Newton you're going to say Isaac Newton one of the most important scientists in history lived during the period called blank and the child is going to have to try and fill in that blank um, when you have younger children they suggest that you just do the first statement or question if you have older children then maybe you do all three of the statements or questions and see how many they can get and then you receive the amount of points um, if you can answer it you receive the amount of points that is on the card so they just give you the instructions um, all on the cards my kids I thought that this was gonna be too much for them right now they inhaled this but um, if you watch any of my other videos you know that we really love a an app called quiz for kids and it's basically a quiz app like a game show um, and they love that app they're not always aware of the information that is included but just through simply playing the game they learn it and then they'll have questions about it so it may not have been something that we covered but just because they play the game so often then they know the answers and then we talk a little bit more about the answers that they do know so kind of we work a little backwards sometimes and that was kind of the same way that they approached these cards um, they had no problem just kind of jumping right in there even though we hadn't covered the majority of the information inside so it was a nice way for them to just kind of start getting familiar with some of the vocabulary words and the historical figures and the um, pieces of literature and you know the time periods and whatever so they really liked these and they're really beautiful cards now what I would like to say um, or what my idea for this is going to be is to add to the cards so um, I have in my Amazon cart um, a set of cards they are black history cards I think there were like 30 of them inside of there they seem to be about the same size a similar size and they have another edition of black women in history so I was gonna add that to the mix I'd really like to see others you know like um, cards on Native Americans in history even though like Sacagawea and Pocahontas like they're included I don't know if it's in this pack or the year two pack but um, you know so they're a couple you know but I'd like to see more but along the way as we are studying different people and different cultures different historical figures um, I see myself definitely just kind of drawing this up in Photoshop my own little version in the same size and getting them printed out and just kind of add them to the game so I'm really excited about that of course you would love it if someone else made them um, which is nice to have the black history editions but I'm sure there's going to be more people that we come across that aren't included in those sets either so my plan is just to add to it so that's kind of my plan for these that I'm obviously very excited about so <laughs>
<laughs> um, so I love these cards. I think they're beautiful. Um, I think it's a wonderful concept and a super easy game and I'm just going to just add more people to it. So now when you move into the year two of the history curriculum, you get this set of laminated sheets um, that are basically a history timeline, which I love. This timeline is included along with the stickers. So when you complete certain lessons, you take that corresponding sticker and put it onto your timeline. I see myself doing the exact same thing with the cards with the stickers. So if there are people or events that were not included um, that I would like to include, then I see myself just drawing that up in Photoshop, printing it out on some sticker paper and including it in a, as another sticker onto our timeline. So I'm really excited about that. Um, that's what I mean about The Good and the Beautiful just being an um, incredible, um, having an incredible structure and basic foundation for me. I just feel like it's given me exactly what I needed to just kind of like soar in our little creative homeschool. So yeah, you have the timeline and the stickers. Along with that, you also have the maps and images. Um, there were maps included inside of the big book of stories that come along with the um, year one of the curriculum. But then you get this additional set of maps that, that will then correspond with the lessons that you were covering in year two. There are beautiful maps and photographs, which again, just really helped me to add that connection to what I'm learning in the lesson. Um, the color-coded territories and spaces just really have helped me wrap my mind around what is really going on <laughs> or what really went on in history. So um, that's really, really helping me. The next thing is the History Year 2 course book. This is laid out the exact same way as the History Year 1 course book. Um, inside of here, I don't really have too much. I don't have too much um, bookmarked here but it's laid out the same way because we're just beginning with year one but like I said this is mostly for me to be able to wrap my mind around um, different time periods and things like that and how I can make certain connections so unit one is ancient Greece and ancient Asia unit two is the Viking exploration in pre-Columbian America um, unit 3 is Colonial America and the U.S. Constitution. Unit 4 is History of U.S. Education, World War I through the Great Depression. And I believe that they are currently still building the history curriculum. So I think that I read that the year 3 of the history program is coming out this year in 2018. And then year 4 will be in the following year. So I'm really excited about those as well. The only thing that I really want to touch on for this year for history with my kids is lesson 17. Well not just lesson 17 but kind of starting around lesson 17 with the motivations for exploration on into Christopher Columbus. So I know this is probably going to sound bad but like I said I was bad in history so the first thing that I gauged the curriculum by was how they approached Columbus. I'm gonna be honest, that's how I that's how I gauged it because I knew Columbus. I knew that history curriculum in my day in school for us told us all the wrong things. So that was kind of where I went to. That's where I gravitated um, first on that matter. And I just kind of read through that lesson. I really just wanted the kids to gather a sense of exploration. And so covering that time period and the whole discoveries of America is something that I definitely want to get into this year. So yeah, I definitely headed straight on into the Christopher Columbus section to see what was going to be said and how it was going to be approached, okay? Um, and as I read through the section, the first unit on Christopher Columbus, I mean, Columbus was sounding pretty noble, you know? And, <laughs> and I just, you know, I was like, whoa, he sounds real noble, you know what I mean? But uh, again, I take the good and the bad, you know, there is good and there is bad. And I'm seeking the truth and the lesson to be learned and all that jazz. So, so I don't know. <laughs> okay, so this section was completely all marked up for me. Um, and I think there's always a red flag and I remind my children of this whenever you read something and that person has all these amazing qualities because I myself would like to think that I have a lot of amazing you know pure qualities but I have a lot of flesh that I have to um, deny 
um, and put under me in order to get to that good and beautiful space. So um, when you read something where someone is just seeming real, you know, noble, you know, and despite his efforts and, you know, him not seeking praise and it's just a little bit alarming, a little bit of a red flag. So I didn't love the way that the story was going or how it was being approached. However, I cannot say enough how much I feel like it just gives me a general starting point on asking those questions and seeking the truth and finding the answers that I'm looking for. So yeah, I'm gonna let you take what you want from that. But this is just my initial thoughts on the matter. Well, that was the only real section of year two that I wanted to uncover for now. I like that I have all those other um, time periods that I can still go in and just get a general you know, push in the right direction. So I love having both of the years right now and I can't wait for the year three to come out. I'm going to get that as well. The last part of year two that you get is another history game called The Explorers and Settlers. It's a smaller size, kind of like a deck of cards. The first two cards will give you instructions, the answer key, um, the game overview. The purpose of the game is to memorize the names and accomplishments of key settlers and explorers. It's pretty simple. And then you just have inside two sets of cards. Um, there's a dark blue and a light blue. The first one is the person. In this case, it is Sacagawea. Then there's the corresponding card which just says that this brave woman was a guide and interpreter for Lewis and Clark on their exploration of the West. So basically it's a matching game. Um, you match the explorer or settler with a, you know their description, who they are. I like this game, it's nice and simple. Just like the cards in year one's Keys of History game, I can see myself doing the same thing with these cards. As we find new explorers and settlers that we find important um, to include in our history studies, I can just see myself doing the exact same thing, drawing, drawing it up in Photoshop and printing it out and laminating it and adding it right to the mix. That pretty much covers year one and year two of the Good and the Beautiful's history course. I hope this kind of gave you some insight into how I am attempting to teach history in our homeschool. I'm really excited about it. I just had a very long conversation with my neighbor whom I love and he is actually a history buff. So when I find out new bits of information, I run over there and we chatted out a bit and he, you know, points me in certain directions and I'm just, I'm really excited. I know, I know I'm seeming real basic right now, but I'm really excited about uncovering, you know, different parts of history, however difficult they may be. I'm really just excited about the opportunity to explore with my kids. Just, I just really feel blessed to have such a tremendous opportunity to uncover information together. You know, I don't know, learning it excites me. It really does. So I really have enjoyed having this basic structure. Um, I'm excited about all that we're gonna learn. I'm hoping that I can um, do videos in the future as I um, just really explore and dive into different lessons and I can share some of the books that I found. I've already started to bookmark lots of books and things that I want to dive into and explore based on the different people that we plan on studying and the different events and stuff so I'm really excited. <laughs> I would love to know if you guys use this history program. Are you guys like really into history? Um, I'm excited about sharing it with you. I would love to, if you know, any recommendations you have when we're studying different time periods or different people. Um, if you have any information about Columbus and the exploration, like don't be, guys, we're all learning here. Um, at least I am. One of the confessions that we say every single night together as a family is that we have a teachable spirit and that is what I want to have. I know I don't know everything and I mean there is a certain, I have to be honest, there is a certain fear of sounding or seeming um, ignorant a lot of times because I mean I'm not the end all be all in language arts, in science, in history, in math. I'm just not. There's sometimes in math where my younger son just really blows me away and answers problems before I even have a chance 
to pretend like I know what the answer is, you know? So I am not trying to be the authority on anything. I just want to learn with my babies and um, I want to teach them how to have a teachable spirit and to be um, always learning, you know, a lifelong learner and just to be open to those lessons and I could ramble on for like ever about this but I just feel like we have, um, we live in a culture where if you're not the expert on an issue then you don't matter and I think it really I think, you know, the word says not to despise the days of humble beginnings. I think even in learning that is, I think there is truth there. Um, sometimes you can feel so ashamed about starting to learn something new or something that you weren't good at. Um, and there's a lot of shame surrounding that. And I don't want to be ashamed of not knowing something. Um, I want to be ashamed of not trying and, and not being truthful and not um, identifying those areas and seeking help in those areas. So I'm not going to get super rambly because I know, yes, I am going to get rambly, you guys. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is that I want to create a culture for my kids where they don't have to feel ashamed for being new at something and um, not being an expert. I'm not an expert in history. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm so excited to learn. So I would love to hear any recommendations if you guys are really into certain time periods or just, I don't know, like uh, if you've learned... Um, read an awesome book on black history or Native American history or um, the Holocaust or whatever like if you you know just really dove into a book or a document uh, or a documentary or something that you really loved I would love to hear those suggestions so that I can explore those different things myself and with the kids so hopefully we can learn together and grow together as homeschooling moms and families and I hope you enjoyed listening to me chit chat about this history curriculum that I love so much <laughs> I hope you guys like this video uh, please don't hesitate to ask me any questions if you have some, um, leave them in the description box below. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!